Howdy partner, welcome to Monday Night New Heart. I'm Sean, this is Mike. Here at New Heart, we're not necessarily trying to get you clean and sober, but trying to get you healed and whole with God. Well, we are delighted to have you tonight. This is New Heart Monday Night, New Heart Monday Night. We've been talking about healing. We've been talking about healing over the last couple of weeks together. And uh, some of us are in the room tonight. We're in need of physical healing. Some of you maybe are battling some of the respiratory uh, sinus illness that's going around. And so we, we want to pray for your healing. Others of you may have injuries. We know I know at least one brother who has an injury that he needs healing from. There may be others who are recovering from surgery. I want to talk a little bit about an agent agent of healing, an agent of healing. I suppose if we were in the medical profession and we were an oncologist and we had been, our patient had been diagnosed with a particular type of cancer, and there's all different types as you know, uh, but if that, if that patient had been diagnosed with a particular type of cancer, we as, as an oncologist may say, well, I, I'm going to prescribe for you a regimen of of uh, chemotherapy, or I'm going to prescribe to you radiation, or or we're going to we're going to try some other different methodologies, other therapies that that we hope is going to address the cancer. If we had, if we're suffering from asthma, asthma, I have cold induced asthma. Isn't that crazy? So if I breathe in cold air, I cough. So if you hear me coughing in air conditioning, that's what it is. But if you have asthma, you probably need an inhaler with some albuterol in it, and you squeeze the, you squeeze the inhaler, and you breathe in, and it opens up your lungs. Uh, if, you have, if you have a severe respiratory infection, and you go to your physician, in all likelihood, he will put you on a regimen of an antibiotic. The interesting thing about an antibiotic is that you have to take the full dosage. You can't, you can't take, a, take it for a couple of days and then decide, well, you know, jeepers, I feel better now, so, so uh, I can put this up in the cupboard and, and forget it. No, you have to take the full regimen in order for it to accomplish its purposes. We talked about in the room, we're, we're a part of New Heart Healing and recovery. Now, some of you are in the room who are engaged in various kinds uh, of recovery process. So, so you maybe did some some work in a 12-step group somewhere, uh, or another another faith-based, Christ-centered uh, recovery program. And now you're here at New Heart. New Heart is based on the promise, as many of you know, found in Ezekiel 36, 26, the Father speaking. It's a promise. I'll give you a new heart. I'll give you new and right desires, and I will put a new spirit in you. And so our, our goal, our goal is not, that, is not that you would just be clean and sober, as good as that is. And I, I applaud those of you that have a a distance of clean and sober. Ben, I think you got two years, right? Yay for Ben, you know, yay, right? Yay. And I know that there are others of you that have that have a distance, you've, you've walked a distance clean and sober, and, and we applaud you tonight. We rejoice with you tonight. That's, that's a victory. But, but clean and sober, and I think Ben would testify this as, as would others, that as good as clean and sober is, that's not our goal. We're not in here tonight about clean and sober. This is not a, a recovery period program. We're not, we're not working 12 steps or we're not working some other kind of program. Did the volume go down all of a sudden? Am I, am I talking too loud, Lloyd? Yeah, is this starting to hurt your ears? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, when I see people, you know, kind of putting their head between their knees and grasping their ears, then I, yeah, then I know it's too loud, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm not sure that I need this microphone, but I'm going to use it anyway because it's too late now, right? Okay, so yeah, so here we go. So, he, so the goal for us is not is not necessarily clean and sober. If you're dealing with a life controlling issue, we're not we're not particularly interested that you feel better, right? So I so I have. Uh, 
you know, Pastor Ron, I've been dealing with depression or I've been dealing with discouragement or I've been dealing with a lot of other emotional issues. Our goal for you tonight is not that you would feel better, although we do believe you will feel better, but our, that is not our goal. We're not, after, we're not chasing feel better. That is not what we're after tonight. So, so we're in the room tonight uh, as New Heart Healing and Recovery, and our goal tonight is transformation, a transformed life, transformation. I, I was in darkness, now I'm in light. I once had an old man, now I have a new man. I was thinking like that, now I don't think like that anymore. I've, I have transformation. I have new desires. <clears throat> I just simply don't want stuff that I wanted years ago. I don't want that anymore. It's not that it's not available to me. It's not that I can't get it. I just don't want it anymore. I have new values. I want different things. I'm headed in a new trajectory in my life. I'm going that way. I'm going that way, not that way. I abandoned that trajectory a long time ago. I'm going this direction. I'm walking with Jesus now. I'm walking with Jesus. And so our agent, our agent is not albuterol. And our agent is not chemotherapy or radiation. Or our agent, our, 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 uh, our agent tonight is not working the steps as good as that is. I'm not shooting against that. That is a good process. If you work the steps and you're in the room, and you're part of AA, I applaud you. Yay, good for you. Keep doing that. Keep working that. But our, our agent tonight is the life-transforming word of the Lord. This is the word of God, the word of God. Now, we're going to unpack that for a second in a minute because the word of God is powerful. Now, we talked about this before in other contexts, but, but 2 Timothy chapter 3 Verse 16 says, all scripture, that means Old Testament and New Testament, Old Testament and New Testament. I had a discussion with one of our parishioners on the phone the other day. She said, Pastor Ron, I had a conversation with my neighbor, and my neighbor told me that, <clears throat> that we don't have to tithe anymore because that's in the Old Covenant, that's, that's Old Testament. And so, so I can just keep all my money for myself. Hallelujah, amen, glory, right, right? So we had this big, long discussion. In reality, Jesus said, I have not come to destroy the law and the prophets. I've come to fulfill the law and the prophets. So when we get saved, we don't tear the Old Testament out and throw it away. We don't cherry pick the Old Testament and say, I like this verse. I like that verse. I'll take that one out of Psalms. I'll take that one out of Genesis, and I'll throw the rest away. The hard stuff, eh, I'm not going to do that, right? Because it's too hard. No, we take the whole thing. All Scripture, all say it out loud, all Scripture, all Scripture is given by God. Listen, all Scripture, word of the Lord says, 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is god breathe. Say it out loud. God breathe. That's pneuma. That's the pneuma of the spirit. That's <sighs> Listen, if, if someone was, was in an automobile accident and we were the first on the scene, if we were the first on the scene after someone had suffered, uh, had been a victim of an automobile accident, one of the things, first things we'd want to know is check to see if there's any, if there's any bleeding. We'd sure want to stop the bleeding. We might take our belt off and uh, put a little tourniquet on to be sure that we had stopped the breathing, or stop the bleeding and then, not the breathing, the bleeding. <laughs> Are you with me, Sandy? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sandy just is saying it's too hard, Pastor Ron. It's just way too hard. Way, just way too hard. Okay. Yeah. And then we'd want to see if they're still breathing. So we may, we may put our ear down and listen if we could hear the sounds of breathing. If there, was, if there were no sounds of breathing, we'd probably do compressions on their chest to see if we can get their heart started again. We'd want them to breathe. Breathing is important. It's, it's hard for you to live if you're not breathing. You got to breathe. You're going to test to that. Yeah, yeah. No, you got, listen, you, you got to breathe. It's the same thing spiritually. Listen, guys, listen very carefully. It's the same thing spiritually. You can't live without the Word of God. 
Period. Period. Because it's God breathed. It's the pneuma. It's the word it's the word of the Lord. The anointed spirit birth word of the Lord that comes into you like life. That's your spiritual life. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable. Yeah. Yeah, it's so our agent for healing tonight is the word, is the word of the Lord. I want to go to to uh, Hebrews chapter four, Hebrews chapter four, verse twelve. For the word of the Lord is living, is living, and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts, the thoughts, the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Living and active. It means every time I open the word of God, it's alive. It's a, this isn't a dusty old history book that I pull off the shelf like I'm reading Charles Dickens or something, right? No, this is the life-giving, vibrant, active, powerful word of the Lord. And every time I open the word of the Lord, I can expect the spirit of God is going to say something to me. Because God knows me by name. He knows you by name. He loves you personally. You're not just a nameless, faceless entity in a crowd. God loves you personally. So our agent is the word of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. So years ago, decade or so ago, there was an attitude about, about brain chemistry, you know. And by the way, we're not going to go into in depth here tonight, but, but just to say this, uh, that, that which is the operative definitive neurochemical that, that functions in your brain in, uh, in drugs and alcohol is called dopamine. I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about that. Can I have that? So, so our brain functions like, like an electrical circuit, and we have a neurotransmitter that comes down this cord. It comes to a little gap right here called a synapse, a synapse, and it sends the chemical across the synapse to the, to the neuron and the, the, on the other side of that synapse, and when the, when the connection is completed, the thought is completed. Now, now, what happens to us is that when we experience something pleasurable, dopamine, the neurotransmitter that makes you feel good, gives you euphoria, comes down this, this, uh, this neuron, comes down... This section of your brain comes into the synapse, and the dopamine floods the synapse. Now, if you were taking cocaine, for example, the cocaine blocks the uptake. Now, you say, well, what's the uptake? The uptake is like a vacuum cleaner. The uptake takes in the excess dopamine and sends it back up for future usage. But cocaine blocks the uptake. And so the brain pumps dopamine, 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 until you experience what we call a high, a euphoria. Now, the neurochemical, the neurochemicals that operate in our brain, by the way, um, your brain has this wonderful process there's also another chemical called glutamate. And when you experience something pleasurable, like you, you go eat a wonderful steak over at the keg, or, or, or I'm sorry, P.F. Chang's. You go over to P.F. Chang's. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And you have Mongolian beef over at P.F. Chang's. Yay! 
Yeah, yeah. 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 And you experience something pleasurable. Not only does dopamine fill your pleasure center, which is, which is the nucleus accumbens in the center of your brain, but also glutamate is released into that, into the, the accumbens. And you, you, that glutamate goes into the memory center, and your memory says, oh, I got to remember this. This was pleasurable. So if you take a hit of your drug of choice, you drink alcohol or you take a hit of cocaine or you're doing meth or heroin or whatever the case might be and it releases the dopamine, your, your brain releases glutamate and says, oh, I have to remember that was good. Now, was it good? No. But your brain wants you to remember it as good. I would say, well, wow, wow. So that sounds kind of hopeless, Pastor Ron. Is there any way out of that? Yeah, it's called neuroplasticity. You and I can, you and I can redefine our brain. So, so when, that, when that trigger comes, when that trigger comes and I want to go down my neural pathway to, to get my drug of choice, oh, I, I know who to talk to, I know his telephone number, I know where to meet him, I, you know, blah, 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 I know how to, I know how to make this, I know how to make this happen, all the, and, and you go down that neural pathway, right, all the way down to actually pulling the trigger and doing your drug of choice. What if, what if the next time that thought comes in your mind, that trigger comes into mind, you do your drug of choice, you stop and wait for the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit says, no, no, no. I'm going to, I'm going to turn this direction and I'm going to call Joe and Shirley, and I'm going to ask Joe and Shirley to pray for me, and, and we're going to read the Word together, and I'm going to take the Word of God into my mind and my heart, and I'm going to start thanking God that, that He is a gracious God, that He has the power to deliver me, that He is the amazing and wonderful God in my life, and that He is going to do wonderful things for me. And I go down a different neural pathway. Did you know the next time that trigger comes, that trigger comes, <clears throat> it may take me three or four times, but after three or four times of saying, no, I'm not going down that neural pathway, I'm going down that neural pathway. Did you know that it will become automatic to you? And you can rewire your brain. You can rewire your brain. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. So my job is to take advantage of the grace of God. God's grace, his mercies are new, new to me every morning. I get up and I say, thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are new to me every morning. And I sit in my, my chair and my, oh, it's a wonderful little leather recliner. It's so good. And it, and it has an electric footrest. You press, oh my word, you press this button and your footrest comes up. Huh? Is that the way life should be or what? Or what? Okay, so anyway. So, so I sit in that leather recliner and I say, Gratitude, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You don't get up and you go over. Ah, that's gonna rain again for heaven's sake. It's gonna rain. Look at it raining for crying out loud. All that dust around here in Seattle and rain and, and the coffee is cold and oh, this is just disgusting. This whole day. Yeah. No. No. No, because now I'm going down that neural pathway. And I will guarantee you, if I go down that neural pathway, it will end nowhere good. Nowhere good. But if I get up and say, Lord, I thank you. 
I thank you. You're an amazing and awesome God. I praise you, Jesus. I thank you for your mercy to me today. I thank you for your grace at work in me today. Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my life today. I welcome you into the life of Mumsy Pumpkin today. I just welcome you into the life of our family today. I bring myself into alignment with you today. Thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I guarantee, I guarantee a week of that, and I guarantee you I get up in the morning. I don't care what the weather is. All I will think about is being with Jesus. You can rewire your brain. It's high time we start rewiring our brain. And quit whining and fussing. And quit calling people up and saying, oh, this is the worst day ever. I have never had a more disgusting day in my whole, yeah. Uh, that's, called, that's called confession. That's called, and we're out of time, that's called agreement with the enemy. Did you know that the enemy wants to destroy your life? Do you know that he got, the enemy is just waiting for you to get up in the morning so he can figure out a way to destroy your life? Listen, I do not want to agree with the enemy. I do not want to give him one advantage in my life. I want to get up in the morning. I want to give the Holy Spirit all the advantage and the enemy zero advantage in my life. 